Thank you, James, for ringing the bell. It certainly was. Um, can you hear me? Am I on? Because it doesn't sound. OK, there we go. Thank you for being with us for worship today. We welcome you all, because all does mean all. We believe that worship is a full body experience, so we hope that you greet God with your whole body, your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole spirit. We do want to know that you are here, though. So please, if you are worshiping with us online, share how you show love to God's world. If you are here in the sanctuary, please sign the black pads in the pews. Leading in worship today, we have Pam on the drums, Bev on the piano, and directing the choir. We do have the choir who will be joining us. Upstairs, we only have a duet. So it is Don and, oh, George, yeah. George is up there. Um, Chris and Pastor Trish are taking a well earned and deserved vacation this week. So they are warmer than we are. But I think it might be raining in South Carolina. Oh, too bad. We have Joe, and I am Pastor Nancy. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and we pick up where we left off last week. John 15, as we continue to unpack what it means to be fruitful bearers of Christ's love. We start with our threshold song that reminds us that we have crossed into worship. stand in body and spirit for our call to worship and opening him. Easter people, Jesus chose you and calls you friend. Jesus made a home among us to show us how to love. Jesus invites us in and beckons us to come to the table to know the joy that comes when we love one another the way God loves us. Easter people, Jesus welcomes you home. Amen. Please remain standing in body and spirit as we sing our opening hymn of praise. While usually sung as a Christmas carol, joy to the world is so much more than that. It is a statement of faith that the celebration of Christ's advent with us is the source of our joy, our work, our service, our prayers, our giving, and our being. Please, oh, you've already gotten that. Please stand in body and spirit as we proclaim our faith. Number 246, Joy to the World.
And now I invite anyone who wants to come to the messy moment to come to the messy moment. going to butcher this, but I am going to try to greet you in a different way. Annie, Lisa, you may need to help. What, what do you think it means, Mr. Joe? Uh-huh. So today is the Greek Easter, because the Greek church and the Western Church celebrate a different calendar. And so their Easter comes after our Easter, just as their Christmas comes, kind of. They celebrate it more on um, Epiphany. So, Christos Anestes? Did I come close? Close, close. okay. So Christos means, what do you think? No, listen to it. Christos. Greeting? Christ. Christ. Oh, cool. Cry. Cool. And, okay, it's the last one you have to help me with. Aneste? Aneste is risen. Christos Aneste. Cool. We're going to hear a little bit more about some other Greek words later. Okay, for those of you who did not hear, George says it's all Greek to him. Let me tell you, George, Greek is tough. I went through two semesters, and that was about two semesters too many. But there is another word in Greek called agape. Does anybody know? And you all can help what agape means. It means love. Unconditional, non-romantic, friendly, sacrificial, life-giving love. So I think it's important that we can celebrate Greek today because when we hear in the book of John about love, that's the love that Jesus is talking about. I want you to bear fruits of love in this world. Gifts of love, sacrificial love, love that you have to make a choice about. I want you to love. That's everything that Jesus calls for us to do. So I think it's important that we can celebrate, continue to celebrate Easter in some of the language that Jesus would have been familiar with and that the writers of most of the New Testament spoke and knew. So when you think about love and you think about the kind of love that Jesus has for us and for the world and the kind of love that Jesus calls for us to share, I want you to remember that it is a self-giving decision to love the world, and that the light of Christ will help us do that. So again, I'm not going to try the Greek again, but let's say Christ is risen. He is, is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let's love one another. Love one another. Amen. Amen. Oh. Yes, and Alpha means the beginning, and that's who we call Jesus. Yeah. James remembered the word Omega, which means the end, so I was reminding him that Alpha is the beginning, and we think of Jesus as being the Alpha and the Omega. You have a friend that's Greek? Yeah, they, they share a spoon for communion.
Our Psalter lesson this morning is taken from Psalm 98. It can be found in your hymnals on page two, or I'm sorry, 818, 818. We will read it responsively. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord has declared victory and revealed vindication in the sight of the nations. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With the trumpets and the sound of horns, make a joyful noise before the ruler of the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As my Abba has loved me, so have I loved you. Live on in my love. And you will live on in my love if you keep my commandments. Just as I live on in Abba God's love and have kept God's commandments. I tell you all this, that my joy may be yours, and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer speak of you as subordinates, because a subordinate doesn't know a superior's business. Instead, I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from Abba God. It was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure so that whatever you ask of Abba God in my name, God will give you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may we hear your word. May we know your word, not just the word as it is written in letters, in the alphabet, in books, but your word as the Christ who comes to us and fills us and floods us with your grace. Amen. Okay, hmm. 
so much for the notes that are written in big print on the iPad. Apparently, we're going to the notes that are in little print on the phone. I had the opportunity on Thursday to go to the Memorial Opera House in Valparaiso to see a community theater production of Beautiful. Now, if you don't know what Beautiful is, it is the music of Carole King. It is the story of Carole King as she begins to break into the music world, and it takes us from her first hit up until the record tapestry. Now, my only, really my only true problem with the production that they did is I didn't hear the song Tapestry. It might have been like a measure or two, but I don't think I heard it. And that's absolutely an amazing Carol King song that talks about how her life was blended together, a tapestry of colors and textures and experiences and events. And then the world of us who loved her music is a world made up of color and texture and different experiences and different events. It was fun to sing I feel the earth move under my feet with the entire audience. And it was really hard not to dance along to the, you ready for it? Da 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 da, brand new song now. Come on, come on, baby, do the locomotion. Who knew that Carol King wrote the locomotion? I think some of us might have known that, but it was a shock at the beginning. It was a wonderful moment in time. But most of the love that she talked about was not the kind of agape love that we hear about in the Bible. I don't know about you, but I can probably sing almost every love song that was written between the time I was 13 and my mid-20s. And some of them kept coming back. Are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. That one, you know, in my early life, it was kind of a doo-wop. And at the end, it was quite a serious love song. We have heard the phrase, those of us who are of a certain generation, love means never having to say you're sorry, which is the most stupid line in any movie of any time because love absolutely means having to say you are sorry. Love absolutely means having to admit a failure. Love absolutely means not only having to say, but needing to say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. That's the kind of love that Jesus talks about. That's the kind of sacrificial love that we find in the Gospel of John, where the whole word, the idea of glory from the beginning to the end, means Jesus' gift of sacrificial love on the cross. You can't escape it. Jesus describes love, and he offers so many examples. Love like the father who welcomes his child home. Love like the scorned woman who washed my feet. 
love like the shepherd who went looking. Not for the 99, but for the one. Whoever you treat, however you treat those who you cross their path, you are treating me. Love is the consummate message of the gospel. If I have loved you, what right do you have to not love yourself? I think it sometimes in our life we, we think that we are like um, Mr. Bumble in Oliver or David Copperfield, one of those Dickens books. What a Dickens he was. Anyway, where he is so humble, he refuses to see the good, not only in himself, but in anyone around himself. That's not the kind of love that Jesus calls for from us. Jesus calls from us self-giving, sacrificial, forgiving, repentant love. Frederick Buechner puts it this way as he unpacks the words love in the Greek. And he uses the word philia, Philadelphia, brotherly love, and agape. This is love that is not based on physical desire. In the, the passages, in this passage, the word love always translates as agape. The word comes into Latin as caritas, and thence into English as charity. I believe he was referring to 1 Corinthians 13, which in the King James uses charity rather than love. The gradual shift of this word to mean philanthropy has brought us back to love as the best translation, despite its ambiguity. Love, in this sense, is a theological virtue, an excellence of character that God has by nature and in which we participate in by grace. Such love is primarily interested in the good of the other person rather than one's own good. It does not attempt to possess or dominate the other, nor is it limited by the scarcities that are imposed by time and place. One can have a few good friends and fewer lovers, but one can have agape for all. For those of you who follow me on Facebook, or who have followed any kind of news this week, you know that the past two weeks, the United Methodist Church has been practicing a general conference of love. We don't all agree with all of the decisions that were made. And we have yet to know what some of those decisions will look like carried out in the local church. But I have friends who are at General Conference, and they have been at multiple General Conferences. And in the past, when they left, it was with a spirit of disunity and a spirit of despair and hopelessness. This year, throughout the entire two weeks, throughout the worship services, even throughout the plenaries, and the insatiable need to hear voice one's own, and the insatiable need to follow Robert's rules of order in its most complex and insane translation, 
there were moments of love. When a choir from Congo sang, when people with rainbow-colored hair stood at the microphone and not only were recognized, but were heard. And on the last morning of worship, with a powerful sermon and decent liturgy, the entire annual conference first broke out in Wada Fellowship, Wada Joy Divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. And Pam, I've got to find the video clip for that because it had the most amazing drum part I have ever heard. And then, all of a sudden, at the end, it broke into love train. (laughs) Yep, people all over the world join hands, start a love train, love train. People all over the world, join hands, join hands, start a love train, love train. They didn't sing it once. They didn't sing it twice. They probably sang it 50 times. The bishop, the... the, the Bishop of, of the Council of Bishops incoming, the Reverend Tracy, Bishop Mal- or Tracy Smith Malone, Bishop Malone, in a beautiful white alb and a go- glorious red stole, stood up there dancing. And then you looked around, and there were other bishops dancing through, kind of doing a train through the general conference. And there were people from all countries, all nationalities, dancing together and holding hands and singing love train. That wasn't romantic love. That was fruit-bearing, sacrificial, Christ love. Love that was modeled after Jesus, who basically told us we are called to love everyone, no matter what. We are called to see one another and to hear the stories that one another shares. It almost took us back, took me back, to a rainbow moment where God says, I will never destroy. This is my promise. I will never destroy. The United Methodist Church has changed, but it is moving forward, and it is strong, and there is still work to be done. There is work to be done to be an inclusive church that sees the value of all individuals. There is work to be done to practice hospitality, especially among those who are the most unlike us. There is work to be done I can't remember if it was in the first week or the second week, and I can't remember if I shared this last week or not, but it's good enough to share again. Bishop Holston stood and said, we must, our our children must know their roots. Our people must know where they are rooted so that others won't try to tell them who they are. We must know who we are so that others cannot try to define for us who we are as God's beloved community.
the United Methodist Church apologized for the action of the Methodist Church in overthrowing the royal family of Hawaii. That's a hard bit of history that we as a church were complicit in overtaking an island nation. For the first time ever, the first Native American bishop preached on the floor of the General Conference. And we as part of a sorrowful history had to recognize that the native schools that ripped children away from their culture were evil. And all of the language that talked about how horrible the LGBTQ community is no longer has a home in the United Methodist Church. It is gone. We have much to celebrate. We still haven't fixed what we need to do with local pastors. That will come. But we have much to celebrate. And my perspective from sitting on the outside looking in and watching as much of the general conference as I could is this year, rather than a spirit of hatred and separation, division, and defense, was a spirit of love. If we can follow that and live that out in the grassroots, we will be living the kind of agape love that the ones who came before us have done. We have work to do. We have work to do so that the church that Jesse and James inherit is a church of love and integrity, hope, unity, diversity, and inclusion. May we be the ones who do the good work for them. Thanks be to God.
Our response to the gospel is found in the way we live our lives, in the gifts we share, the prayers we pray, the offering we give, and the many ways we support this church. Please read the announcements in the bulletin insert this week and when they are sent to you via email, and pray and give. We will celebrate Higher Education and Graduation Sunday on May 19th. Please plan on staying after worship as we greet those who have received scholarships during a time of fellowship. This is an opportunity to show hospitality to guests in our worship service and to celebrate our own who will either graduate or receive these honors. If you are aware of anyone graduating, please let the office know. And also that is Pentecost. So ha as has been the tradition, at least since I've been here, wear the colors of fire and flame and, I suppose, wind, if you can figure out what that color is, and grass and growing as we celebrate Pentecost. The Tuesday evening study group with me will begin a new book study this Tuesday as we discuss the False White Gospel, Rejecting Christian Nationalism by Jim Wallace. If you would like to join in on Tuesdays at 7.30, let me know. Books might be available on Amazon. It, they are definitely available on Kindle, and I believe they have some at Barnes & Noble in Valparaiso. Um, the Zoom link will be posted when we send out emails this week. Messy Conversations continues to meet on Wednesdays at 445 with Pastor Trish while the kids wonder with Miss Bev, with the exception of this coming Wednesday, May 8th, in which there is no Wonder Wednesday. Our dear Miss Bev will be wrangling grandchildren in Michigan, I think, so. Oh, and no Messy Conversations as Pastor Trish and Chris are on vacation, so. Uh, with the exception of this week, Messy Conversations continue to meet on Wednesdays at 4.45 p.m. with Pastor Trish while the kids wander with Miss Bev. Come and join us as we ask messy questions about holy troublemakers and unconventional saints. Not only will Bev be wrangling grandchildren, but she will be wrangling four dogs? Three dogs. So I'm not sure... Who will need more wrangling, the kids or, or the animals? Please read the announcement in the bulletin or when we send out the email about the many ways you can watch and learn about General Conference. If you wish to hear from our conference superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Marty Lundy, who was present, please join, plan on joining in a webinar that will be held on Tuesday, May 14th at 6 o'clock our time. I will post that link. You have to sign up to get it. There is also a Zoom link floating around for a conversation today at 1 o'clock our time. I'm not sure I'm going to be on that one. So. The Administrative Council will meet on Monday, May 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the church. The next cross beams will be a joint May-June issue. We will send out give back coupons via email, and of course you may pick them up next week. Um, during worship or in the office during the week. Last time we raised $185. The next give back date is May 16th. And I'd like to thank Karen and John Vanderwagen for organizing all of this. There is an update page for the directory that will be found on the round table in the gathering room. If you are watching from home and need us to deliver the updated page or the directory, please let us know in the chat or call or email the church office. However, it's not there yet this week, so it will be next week. We're still updating the update page. As the usher brings our prayer request to the front, may we sing our prayer song, Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying, found on page 2193 of The Faith We Sing. Following the song, we will be led in a responsive prayer that will be found on the screen.
invite you to pray with me. O holy God, you know where our hearts are. You know where our strength is. You know where our blind spots are. You know where we need to be stretched to grow. And you love us even in the face of all of that. And for that, we give you great thanks. O Holy One, we know that your world is not the world that you want it to be. You know that we still lose too many children from around the world due to disease, famine, war, and yet, you still love us. Give us the courage to speak out against injustice so that all of your children may find new delight in this world that you have given to us. We pray for the upcoming elections in all of our communities that Seeking the good of the other will come first. And hatred and vitriol will be left behind. We pray for those whom we name in our hearts. For those who have suffered loss and who grieve. For those who need healing for those who feel lost. May we all be found and embraced in your arms of love. Amen. The stewardship way of life is the grateful response of a Christian disciple who recognizes and receives God's gifts and shares these gifts in love of God and neighbor. Will the ushers please come to receive our offer? United Methodist Church, all who are gathered in the sanctuary are welcome to come to receive communion, and 
Behind the communion rail, we have some consecrated elements that you may carry out to those in your community, your friends, or those whom you visit this week who may also need to receive from the cup and the loaf. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyous thing always and everywhere to give praise to you, creator of heaven and earth. You took the formless chaos, swept across it with your mighty spirit, and said, let there be light, and there was light. You separated the heavens and earth and brought forth trees and plants. You sent sun, moon, and stars in the heavens and called forth fish, birds, and all living creatures. You made us creatures of your own image to live in communion with you. We long for a relationship with you, but in our humanness we turn away. Yet you remain steadfast, calling us again and again to turn to you. For your grace and for all your mercies toward us, we join your people on earth and all the company of heaven in proclaiming your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. That one's mine, folks. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit flowed through his life as he became the bridge for our reconciliation. In this time, we remember his life and work. We remember your gift of baptism. We reflect on the mystery of the cross. We dare to ponder resurrection. Especially, we recall how Jesus took grain, grown by your sunshine and rain, ground by human hands into flour, mixed with water, and made into bread, in honor of him who is the bread of life. We recall how Jesus took the cup with grapes grown in your sunlight, trod into juice for drinking, that we might know you and never thirst again. And taking bread and cup, blessing and breaking them, Jesus gave them new meaning as he said, take eat, this is my body, drink from this cup, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. In remembrance of all your mighty acts on our behalf, we bring our whole selves to you as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on these, the gifts of your creation, grain and grape, and on us, your children. Make us see your touch in all of creation and let us bring your light into every darkened shadow. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ, broken for you.
and the blood of Christ shed for you. As the beloved children of God, may we with confidence prepare, not prepare, may we with confidence proclaim the prayer that Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will those who are helping to serve communion please come today?
May we pray. Oh God, you have given, we have received. We are filled with your love. Thank you. Amen. on the monitor, I Come With Joy, number 617. I come with joy to meet my Lord forgiven love and faith and honor recall his life and Beloved, may God bless you with the strength to love one another as God loves each and every one of you, that you may be, you may find the complete, total, and everlasting joy that comes when we abide together with God who is love. Amen.